I also want to start with a thank you, uh, an immense thank you to the Arts Council Wales, Age Cymru, and the Bering Foundation for enabling us to come together in this fantastically inspiring setting, this, this building and the park outside the building, uh, the wonderful uh, context in which we're going to talk about things today. And I have three particular reasons why I'm passionate about what we're talking about today and why I have very big hopes for what can come out of today. And they are aging, loneliness, and the arts. I have been working now across the UK on behalf of older people and with older people for quite a long time uh, to try to create that world in which people are highly valued, uh, have lives that are richer, and voices that are heard as they grow older. Um, and that's been the thing that I've done for quite a long time. The challenge we have, and I think in a way the biggest challenge of all, is that painful sense of a gap in your life of loss where you, for whatever reason, do not have the quality or quantity of contact in your life. It is a universal, all ages experience, the heartache of loneliness uh, and isolation. That sense of loss that nobody really uh, cares whether you get up tomorrow. Um, but I think today is a brilliant opportunity to uh, explore together ways forward out of that through artistic creation. And for me personally, and I speak as somebody who, I described myself to Phil a moment ago as an aspiring tenor, which I think is the accurate description of my singing capabilities. And for me, there is nothing like the creative arts to enrich life uh, and to create beauty and fun, as Phil just said, and also to help us uh, exercise that thing that's been called agency, that capacity to act, to cause things to happen, to have an impact on the world in which we live. So I'm very, very excited about today, and uh, without further ado, what I would like to do now is introduce uh, we have three different case studies, different and wonderfully uh, inspiring different ways of looking at creative arts and taking them forward. And I'd like to start by inviting uh, Emma Robinson of Age Cymru to come up and talk about celebrating creative aging through the Gwanrin Festival. And what I would hope we could do is have time maybe for a quick question as each uh, session finishes, and then maybe at the end. Um, Emma, welcome. Thank you very much indeed. Hello, everybody. Um, so I'm just going to start by telling you a little bit about the Gwanwind Festival. Um, it's Wales's only dedicated arts festival for older people. Uh, it celebrates creativity in older age and uses the theme of Gwanwyn, which means spring in Welsh, um, growth, opportunity and renewal as um, very recurring themes in the work that it creates. It began in 2007, um, so celebrated its 10th birthday last year, and last year saw over 11,000 people take part in roughly 500 events. We have a community grant scheme attached to the festival, um, and this year we've awarded 500 grants, um, awarding up to 500 pounds for local participatory activity across Wales, which forms the kind of backbone of the festival. Um, we also organize showcase events at venues and then work um, on special projects and commissions that meet uh, strategic priorities, whether that's uh, geographical areas we haven't worked in or um, working with a group of people um, we want to engage. So I've just got some uh, numbers to kind of show you um, some of the successes of Gwanwyn. 97% um, of people that took part last year wanted to do so again. 
um, which is great. Um, and 78% of those uh, stated that they wanted to take part in further artistic activity as a result of taking part, um, which is a fabulous finding. Like, uh, we're showing that we're really turning people onto the arts and they want to go and search out further arts as a result of taking part in the stuff that we can offer. 70% um, hadn't taken part in a Guanwin event before, which indicates that we're reaching new people and audiences each year. In terms of emotional, mental health and well-being, 74% said they felt com more confident, 85% felt happier, 79% felt more creative, 76% felt more sociable, and the great results go on. 67% uh, felt healthier as a result, which is a fantastic outcome. So the priorities for Gwanwin, um, apologies for anybody who's heard me speak before, because this is a quote that I always keep returning to. Um, it's by a British folk singer called Roy Bailey, um, and it really sums up the kind of um, attitude towards the programming of work that we want to see in the festival. Um, it's good to look back, but it's rude to stare. Um, yeah, let's celebrate what people are doing now. Um, and in the future, let's not just get stuck on reminiscence and um, what people have done in the past. Um, Gwanwin's Bread and Butter is about increasing opportunities for participation. Um, more recently, we're looking at how Gwanwin can combat social isolation and loneliness. We want to do more work with venues, um, supporting the work already on becoming dementia friendly and age friendly and also putting a spotlight um, on the work of professional older artists and celebrating ageing. I just have some photos of some of the work that took place last year. This was um, uh, part of the Men's Sheds project that you'll hear more about later. And this was part of a dance weekend. Um, we worked in partnership um, with Rubicon Dance a few years ago and organised a dance weekend. And I just want to share a quote from one of the dancers. Um, she shared her thoughts just before she was going on stage. It's great to feel relevant, needed and reinvigorated, to be, appreci to be appreciated for what I am now, not what I was, not what I used to be able to do, but who I have become through my life experience and my own journey. Dancing and performing are what makes me feel most alive. Will we be appreciated, liked, admired, or will we look foolish? Who knows? It's scary and it's dangerous but it's life enhancing to be given a chance to do these things again, and I'm trying to be brave. On a similar vein, um, we're trying to smash through that stereotype of what it is to be an older person in Wales. Um, so worked with um, people uh, over 50, um, sharing their stories about tattoos and asking the story if they did really regret it when they were older, and we found that people didn't. A few years ago, we worked in partnership with Cardiff Comedy Festival and the Glee Club to find the funniest older person in Wales. Um, Phil Westcott, who won the competition, um, came to the project because he, uh, he saw uh, an advert on CFAX, which tells you sort of that it was quite a while ago. Um, but by his own admission, he was living with depression, um, saw the advert on CFAX and thought, you know what, if I can do this, I can take on the rest of life and he's gone on to um, perform professionally um, on the Welsh circuit and in London so the stuff we're doing really is life-changing. We've been running parkour for pensioners sessions in Cardiff Bay for the last few years, a title that's purposely meant to be um, uh, spark a response. Um, we want to be able to reclaim activity that's usually just the arena for young people. Um, while parkour for pensioners is fun and silly, it does have a serious message behind it, um, encouraging older people to develop their core skills and core strengths, um, which is a really important activity with um, Age Cymru's Falls Awareness. Um, so yeah, using the arts and creativity um, to kind of sell a more serious message. We also do a lot of work with health boards. Um, uh, this was a tactile um, art piece that's on display in Landock Hospital, working with people who have dementia um, on their assessment and treatment. And a few years ago, we worked with Rubicon on developing a manual called Shake a Leg for uh, dance practitioners who are working with older people across Wales. 
Now, I work a lot with artists, but I'm not an artist myself, as you can see from this map. Um, but the 2017 programme will be going live on our website very soon. But just to give you a little flavour of what's to come in May, uh, we have Montage Writers running the first ever uh, writing festival in Anglesey. Snowdonia donkeys, a particular favourite of mine, um, are introducing donkeys into care settings in North Wales, using it as a trigger to um, spark creative responses. Um, we're working with Literature Wales. They're offering uh, train rides um, linked into the Year of Legends uh, work this year. Um, and we're doing an intergenerational project with Cardiff City Football Foundation um, with older people and younger people sharing their stories about football. So what's to come? Um, we're working in partnership with our local partners, Age Cymru Gwynedd Amon and Age Cymru Ceredigion, on really drilling down on areas that we can try and affect greater change. Um, so we're going to introduce uh, Gwanwin clubs uh, looking at uh, combating uh, the loneliness and social isolation of older people in those areas. And we're in very early conversations with uh, Luminate in Scotland and Bealtaine in Ireland about what a Celtic offer could be between the three festivals. I've just finished reading this book. It's part of the School of Life series. I don't know if people are familiar with that. Um, it's got the wonderful title, How to Age. Um, so if anybody wants to um, borrow the copy, um, please come and see me. Um, but on reading it, there was one point that really resonated really strongly with me. Um, especially as a lot of the work with creative ageing and arts and older people is looking more on the social isolation and loneliness agenda. Um, Anne Karpf talks of the term um, through the prism of vulnerability and I just want to kind of lodge that in your thoughts as we go on for discussions later today. Um, as I think sometimes we can be quite guilty of the work that we offer always being through this prism of vulnerability. Um, to give you an example, I was at an exhibition recently um, where older people were exhibiting some visual artwork that they'd created. And a lot of the responses from the audience that had come had that head tilt. Oh, oh bless. Oh, didn't she do well for her age? And it's that statement that I want to smash, that I want to stop. Let's focus on work that's on ability, on strength, on positivity. Yeah, so that's me. Thank you very much. Uh, enjoy today. Um, I was debating whether to read this quote out, because when I did it in the office, it came over as really sinister, and that's not the way it's intended. So, um, but yeah, enjoy today. Um, it's the oldest you've ever been, uh, and the youngest you'll ever be. Thank you. I just wanted to ask you one as well. Thank you for that lovely uh, presentation. Not at all sinister. And uh, that I think Arts Council Wales has seen us about make, reach, sustain. Is that right? And I'm just interested in what happens to sustain festivals. You know, what happens the day after something happens? What happens day in, day out um, yeah, I to think make things go on? Um, going back to one of the percentages is that the people taking part in Gwamwin are now turned on to the arts and want to take part in more local activity in their area. So I think there's a, we could be doing more in signposting people to provision in their area and wider. And one of the things we're looking at by the introduction of the Gwamwin clubs is looking at year-round um, activity and provision um, away from the pressure of having to deliver just within the month of May for the festival. Thank you. Are there any questions uh, uh, that anybody would like to ask at this stage? I'm sure there'll be opportunities. Yeah, right at the back there, please. It's a national festival um, taking place all across uh, Wales during the month of May. Yeah. Okay. Any other? Yes, just down here. Yeah. for the Vale Council in uh, Barry. Um, I was just wondering, all the projects that you've mentioned are, sound fabulous and fantastic, 
Um, and I am aware of the Grumman project. And I just wondered how you fund all of those activities and how you might fund the clubs and things thereafter. Grumman's part funded. Um, Can from we just check that we heard that? It's about how you fund. Is that right? How we go on so Gwen was part funded from Welsh Government under the Healthy Ageing um, programmes um, and they fund the grant scheme um, and office costs and me and then I apply to the Arts Council each year um, to fund more of the sort of strategic ideas and projects so the Gwen clubs will be coming from support from the Arts Council. Great. Any other? I'm trying to see. Yes, there was one here. Yeah, great. Can we have the mic? Thank you. Norton. How, how do you access the multicultural community with these projects and funding with the languages and also yeah, the different cultures? Yeah, I've, um, we work, have worked with Bowzo in the past in Cardiff, um, running intergenerational projects with them. Um, but yeah, I do think that's an area um, that we um, could do a lot more in. So how would you use the Arts Council? I think tapping into the activity that's already um, occurring and um, speaking to organisations in the voluntary sector and the third sector to make sure that they're engaged and on board. Great. Thank you very much indeed, Anna. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and now I'd like to move on.